Bell's Meta uh, first chapter thesis. It's called Cell Type and Sex Specific Transcriptomics of the Dorsolateral Prefrontal Cortex in Depression. And first, I would like to uh, to start with uh, a figure that is presented here, uh, which says the human brain is composed of billions of the individual cells, which belong to a great diversity of cell types. It is not just one cell type. And these cells have a lot of interaction that can give race to a lot of complex functions, as well as these functions, such as we will see in psychiatric diseases. And each cell is not just defined by its genome, but also by its epigenome, transcriptome, proteome, and other measurable properties that we will try to measure. So um, we're gonna talk first about major depressive disorder which is a condition characterized by persistent low mood, anhedonia, feelings of guilt and worthlessness, as well as societal ideation, among other symptoms. It affects a lot of people, over 2 million people globally, and it's a leading cause of disability worldwide, and it's very heterogeneous in its presentation. It can have uh, varying levels of symptom severity, recurrence, treatment resistance, and comorbidities. Uh, there are genetic contributions, uh, mostly with a modest heritability, and GWAS have identified over 100 genetic loci associated with depression. Also, brain imaging studies have indicated region-specific changes, as well as morphologic uh, changes in specific brain regions. Uh, transcriptomics specific regions has also been seen as well as, as epigenetic changes. Uh, and the incidence of depression is higher in women than in men, uh, as well as there is psychometric evidence that the molecular basis of depression may be different between sexes. And now for the biological mechanism of depression is not very well established, but the main theory is that depression is believed to be involved in the regulation of the stress response system, specifically in the HPA axis, which is the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And this can lead to abnormal secretions of various molecules such as CRH, uh, ACTH, and corticosteroids. Uh, also, the sympathetic nervous system responds to stress and restoration of homeostasis by the parasympathetic nervous systems can also be uh, disrupted in depression. There is an imbalance in excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmission, glial cells and white matter dysfunction, also neuroinflammation and blood barrier blood-brain barrier deficits, such as breaks, has been linked to, to this disease. And a very important uh, fact is the gene-environment interactions, particularly in the context of exposure to early life stress. And well, uh, there are sex differences in depression. As I have already told you, uh, women have a higher incidence, but they are also more likely to experience uh, anxiety and recurring depression, and men are more likely to experience comorbid substance use disorder, and they have higher risk of death by suicide. Um, also, the brain imaging has uh, shown difference between sexes, uh, not only in the in the disease, but also in the default mode network, uh, as well as cortical thickness, surface area, and gerification. Um, the genome-wide association studies has also been uh, sex stratified, and they have found uh, distinct loci in men and women. Uh, sex hormones are also thought that can be um, promoting this kind of differences, as well as differences in, in neurotransmitter systems, neurotropic factors, and 
pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory cytokines. And well, transcriptomic studies have shown a striking difference in gene expression changes in males and females with depression. Uh, well, all of this can tell us that actually there, there may be uh, different base, molecule bases for depression. So uh, we have already, uh, well, uh, have differences in animal models too. And this is a lot of information, so I'm just going to point out the um, main points. So it has been seen the differences in the response to stress paradigm in the response in early life stress models in biological systems of interest has been also studied, just as I have said, the HPA axis and GR and CRH respond differently between sexes and BDNF, serotonin receptors, transporters, GABAergic and glutamergic signalings also differ between sexes. Uh, estrogen, estrogen receptors are also different. Um, as I have said, transcriptomic and behavioral responses and also microglial states and immune functions differ. And more into a subject, um, there has been a lot of uh, sex specificity, specificity in transcriptomic uh, data such as Lavonteal says, there was little overlap of uh, disease associated uh, differential express genes. Uh, there was a lack of concordance in threshold break patterns and uh, gene co-expression model analysis supported sex differences. Also uh, studies of long non coding RNAs has been done with striking differences in these long non coding RNAs expressions, and not only in the disease, but also in baseline expression of long non coding RNAs. Uh, in 2015, Ting et al. identified 566 genes associated with depression, and 39 of these genes. Uh, showed an effect of sex, although he said not necessarily not necessarily revealing opposite directions. But in 2018, revisiting uh, data and with more data, uh, they found most differential genes, differential express genes were sex specific, and they were uh, in common between sexes. Uh, they primarily show opposite direction effect. And they found also evidence for discordance in pattern of depression associated genes expression between males and females. Uh, in 2022, Sweeney et al. found uh, two main genes, SPRY2 and ITPR3, with overall differential expression in uh, depression but also a handful of mutually exclusive uh, differential express genes in male, including ITPR3, and in, in female, including SPRY2. Uh, he also found six genes with opposite duration effects uh, in different sexes, including CKB and U UBE2M, which were increasing in expression in the depressed males and manea, which was increasing expression in depressed females. And well, uh, also there is a lot of cell types implicated in depression. I'm just going to point out uh, the, the main points. Uh, there is uh, neuronal contributions, uh, a lot of genes related to synaptic vesicles, dendritic spines, and action and axon growth has shown decreased expression in depression. Uh, specific transcript variants of synaptic proteins involved in neurotransmitter release and synaptic function has uh, decreased increased in the PFC. 
And also GENCO expression analysis has uh, identified a gen model enriched for glutamatergic and GABAergic gene sets. Uh, excitatory and inhibitory neural subtypes has also contributed to this. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of real contributions in the astrocyte. Uh, there has been um, damp-regulated functions, uh, such as the one encoding connexins and SOX9 transcription factor. Uh, the astrocyte morphology has also been affected. Um, uh, the oligodendrocyte has also been affected. The main genes found are MAG, MOG, MOFB, and PLP1 that are then regulated in the disease. And also there is gap junction, gap junction dysregulation as we have seen in the uh, blood barrier disruption. For example, connexin genes and gap junction genes. Uh, also, microglia and endothelial cells has shown dysregulation of inflammatory molecules, including cytokines and molecules downstream of interferons. And this is a direct, yeah, a little quote from the thesis, which says that overall the last several years, researchers have optimized single cell transcriptome and genome sequencing in postmortem human brain tissue. This has given us unprecedented access to cell type specific gene expression profiles and somatic mutations unique to pathological states. Additionally, we can now measure epigenetic information from individual brain cells, and within advanced statistical approaches, we can focus on the key cell types underlying psychiatric and other brain phenotypes. So uh, we're going to uh, talk about a bit of single cell sequencing technologies. And these technologies uh, enable the measurement of genomes, transcriptomes, proteomes, and epigenomes at a single cell level. That's the main point. Uh, these technologies can be combined with morphological, spatiotemporal, and electrophysical data, if not so other. So they are very powerful, and several of these techniques are used for single cell and single nucleus RNA uh, sequencing. Uh, there are three main um, yeah, like methods to do this. The first is the plate-based method in which cells or nuclei are sorted into microplate wells, and then the RNA is extracted from each well uh, and used for library preparations. Uh, this method uh, actually allows uh, full-length cDNA sequencing, but generally is very low throughput. Then we have the microfluidic-based methods that are the most popular. Some techniques like DropSeq, InDrops, Drops, NCSeq, and Denex Chromium, which uh, was used for the data that I'm working with. Uh, they can encapsulate individual cells or nuclei into all droplets in a microfluid microfluidic device. And each cell or nucleus is tagged with a unique barcode, so it can be then identified and mapped. And mRNA molecules are captured. Uh, these methods are very uh, scalable up to millions of cells, but they can suffer from higher dropout rates and also three prime bias rates. And there is also combinatorial indexing is similar to the last one. It uses a split and pull strategies for measuring various aspects of cellular biology. This is like the new thing that it has, such as DNA methylation, chromatin states, and multiple modalities of information. And here, cell nuclei are sorted and tagged with initial barcodes, and then they are followed by sequential pooling and attachment of additional barcodes, which will allow to identify uh, each individual cell's original set barcodes, even after the pooling count. 
uh, the number of barcodes used and the cells pool are uh, adjusted to ensure the probability of multiple cells receiving the same combination of barcodes is very low, but it can happen. <laughs> Mm, for profiling DNA sequence, uh, most studies have uh, relied on sorting of individual nuclei into wells of microplate, but recently uh, commercial technology um, has been created with holes of promise for detecting uh, both copy number variation and single nucleate variation at a single cell resolution. This is uh, not quite uh, in the reality, like um, in a standard way, yeah, but it can be achieved. And also droplet-based profiling of open chromatin in single cells has been developed. Uh, several techniques for acquiring multimodal data at single cells resolution exist, such as CITES-seq, which measures cell surface epitopes and transcriptomes, and patch six that measures electrophysiological recordings and transcriptomes. And well, uh, we have now a single cell and single nucleus sequencing of the mouse uh, brain. Uh, here, multiple regions has been studied, such as the cortical regions, subcortical structures, and hippocampus. Uh, it has also been studied uh, in different stages of development over time and has also a uh, target for different cell types for different experimental perturbations. And it has a, um, created cellular diversity atlas overall. And now for the single cell resolution studies of sequence variation in the human brain, um, these have provided insights into somatic mutations. They include SMVs and CNVs, which may accumulate in postmitotic cells of the central nervous system over development and aging. Uh, the copy number variations in single neurons uh, one of the main studies is uh, McConnell et al. from 2013, which studies this variation in single neurons from postmotor human frontal cortex and in the uh, pluripotent stem cells. Mm -hmm. But they found that the cultured neurons had a higher in incidence of CNBs compared to the NPCs or fibroblasts, suggesting that somatic mutation may play a role in neuronal development. Uh, there has also been a uh, study the anaplody and sub subchromosome, subchromosomal copy number variations. In 2014, uh, they uh, analyzed the copy number variations in postmortem brain tissues and found that uh, aneuploidy is rare, but subchromosomal copy number variations are common. These were identified in and in shared by multiple neurons, indicating that these mutations are not artifacts and they may have a functional significance. And also it has been uh, detected a uh, retrotransposon insertion in 2012, uh, and Froni et al. examined uh, L1 retrotransposition rates in neuronal nuclei and found that somatic L1 insertions are generally rare. However, uh, in 2015, Optometal reported higher rates of somatic L1 insertions in hippocampal neuron and glia, which uh, then uh, thought to be closer to early fighting, so of low insertion rates. Uh, also, somatic uh, single nucleate variations has been studied. studied. Uh, accumulation of single nucleate variation with age. Uh, this is important because um, in 2018, uh, in the 
they were uh, measured in the hippocampus and prefrontal cortex of individuals spanning different ages, and they found that somatic uh, single nickel variations accumulate with age and are enriched in neuronally expressed genes with a higher rate of accumulation in hippocampus. This was not seen in a lot of other regions. Uh, also, they, uh, there has been comparison with non-neuronal cells in 2019, uh, found that neurons harbor more than uh, CNVs that non-neuronal non or non-neuronal cells. And these CNVs tend to affect a larger portion of the genomes. Also found that a decreased prevalence of neurons with CNVs in genomes with age, suggesting a potential susceptibility to aging-related aging loss. And um, now we have a like single nucleus methylomics in the postmortem human brain. This is uh, not that common because whole genome bisulfites bisulfite sequencing of single cells is challenging, mostly due to material loss during uh, this bisulfite conversion. So there is a need for high sequencing coverage for each cell, making it very expensive. One of the, if not like the only famous one, uh, published is by Liu et, Liu et al. in 2017, where he performed single nucleus uh, whole genome bisulfite sequencing of the human frontal cortex. And this allowed to create a map of DNA methylation at single cell resolution. They use a fan to isolate the nuclei into microplates, followed by the bisulfite conversion and sequencing. And they analyze almost 3,000 nuclei from the frontal cortex of one single subject. Uh, the data was sparse, but still they were able to separate cortical excitatory and inhibitory neural subtypes based on the DNA methylation signatures. That And that is like comparable to what can be done with single, uh, with single nucleus RNA sequencing. Uh, they found that non-CG methylation was more cell type specific than CG methylations, and patterns of cell type specific methylations were highly conserved, not only in the mouse brain, but also in the human brain. And overall, uh, this study is a valuable reference for cell type specific DNA methylations in, in the human brain. And I have some insights from all this chapter, such as single cell sequencing of the human brain has provided insight into cellular diversity, allowing the identification and characterization of different cell types, including neurons and glial cell cells. But there are a lot of others because they're very diverse. Uh, the studies has revealed difference in gene expression but not just in gene expression, also DNA methylations and other molecular features between cell types. And this can provide a deeper understanding on the brain function and development, as well as we have seen um, temporal analysis has been done. And well, computation, computational methods such as imputation and data cells alignment algorithms has been used to overcome some, some limitation like the hygiene dropout rates or the inter-individual variability. Uh, it's more like the same. Some challenges are the limitation of this um, single cell sequencing uh, overall in the human brain that include underrepresentation of glial cells and lower RNA molecule detection in glia compared to neurons. Uh, also the technical variability in the in the experiments because of the different samples or different individuals. And one of the strategies that um, they um, address here in the thesis is that we can introduce control variability during the nuclei capture steps 
for example, combining subjects that differ in known in known um, SNVs. And there is always always the computational challenges. And for the perspectives, well, the single cell uh, sequencing data can be used uh, to indirectly inform or understanding of disease states, as we have sent by elucidating cell type contribution to observe these related changes in gene expressions or in other um, measurable things like DNA methylations. Uh, also integration of multimodal data and use of complementary, complementary approaches such as ISH are likely to be in key in future single cell resolution studies and continuing advancement in single cell sequencing technologies and computational methods will enhance our ability to study cellular diversity and function in the human brain. So thank you, that's, that's everything. Great job, Melissa.